So hi, so, hi hello, everyone. hello everyone, thank, thank you for, for um, being at being the at first French uh, healthcare uh, conference uh, at uh, the Expo Dubai 2020. Um, this morning we, uh, we will be talking about future perspectives in uh, healthcare and uh, urban planning. Um, I uh, am Joanna from the uh, French Healthcare Association, and I will be a uh, moderator because um, Virginie, uh, who uh, couldn't make it this morning, so I will try to uh, uh, to, uh, to um, talk on the subject uh, with uh, with our um, uh, intervenant today. So maybe I will let you uh, introduce yourselves. Um, we have online Michel Lozano. Oh, nice to meet you all. Um, uh, so, my, my name is Michael Lozan, I'm the president and co-founder of the company Tessalis, specialized in uh, healthcare waste management. I'm happy to be with you today. So, uh, we have also... Hello everyone, I'm Simon Chassin, I'm representing Innovacom. We are French, the, we are the EL's branch of uh, Orange Group. I'm very happy to be here today. Emmanuel Masson. Uh, it's more, it's more, more COVID. 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 Uh, Emmanuel Masson, Emmanuel I'm uh, the, the CEO of Clinea. Clinea is the French uh, uh, branch of uh, Orpea Group, and I'm also the uh, executive vice president of the group in charge of the development and the strategy. Thank you very much. Uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sébastien Duré, um, co founder and managing director of Open, a French uh, technology company specialized in years and patient uh, journey. Thank you so much. Yannick Lucas? Uh, hello. hello. I'm Yannick Lucas. I'm the Director of International Relations of Andre de Frances, the French Federation of Non-Profit Health Insurance. Thank you so much. Hello, so I present myself. I'm Manafou de Nasser, architect and partner from AIA, Applied Designers. And I will uh, make a presentation today with uh, Simon. You can introduce uh, Otto. Hello, I'm Simon Sudos, uh, architect in AI designers and uh, partners in the group. Thank you very much. Okay. C'est pour nous, Elodie, on va start? Oui. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, first, uh, uh, we are sorry because I have provided to be with you, but uh, as you know, the sanitary uh, reasons, uh, they stopped my trip. I had uh, COVID last week, so I could not be with you. And second thing, we have uh, prepared one presentation, a big presentation to, with, uh, the, for this subject, but uh, I understand we have only 10 minutes. And to, uh, to take uh, this time, we have reduced uh, our presentation. The title of this presentation we have is uh, Two World Health Urban Planning. Uh, as you see, uh, you can see just on the first slide. So, uh, um, uh, the, the, the picture you see is uh, it's the page of our uh, book uh, produced by our foundation. And all our work now, we base it on this research that uh, uh, our foundation do. And now, uh, since uh, 10 years, we started this uh, research. OK, you can go to the second. Uh, this is the content. We can go ahead because it's uh, uh, so much. We can pass to the So I, I introduce Amila. Ali Alibaba Designer is created uh, in 1964 by uh, two engineers and two uh, architects. For this, we have the name AIA uh, Architect and Engineer Associated, and now we call it Life Designers. So we have an experience uh, now uh, since uh, 56 years ago. We, we, we work on, on this subject uh, of uh, project in sanitary, but not only uh, in, uh, in a hospital uh, or clinic. Our, uh, our company now, we have 60, 150 employees, and uh, we have 40, 40 sites in, in France, majority is in France, and we have some sites in, um, 
in Luxembourg, Switzerland, and uh, China. But we work, uh, we have a lot of projects also on all over the world. And the major of our uh, entreprise, we have, uh, we, we have IA architect is uh, take all the architects in this company, and we have IA engineer, IA engineers, uh, and also IA management, the, all the people that they work in the site and uh, also follow uh, the, the client. And the, the fourth is IA environment, this is uh, what uh, our subject is. I uh, they work all for the uh, the environment, and we follow also our all architect and engineer in our work. And also, I uh, territory is for urban. And they work for the urban. So our end as uh, we design together project, we uh, were the head and the will being are the head of our commitment. This you can go to this uh, for this. It's now two, three years. I are designers committed for the future, and uh, we 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 give another thing that we said that uh, we go from the uh, from shared architecture to the committed architecture. For for this, uh, we have uh, take four big uh, big committed. The first is to monitor the group, the global carbon ter territory to comply with the, the uh, Paris Agreement. It means that we we uh, we monitor this trajectory not only on our project but also for our uh, life to uh, every day for all salaries. So we try to monitor which uh, which. Uh, the transport you use on car or bus or bicycle, so we we calculate all of uh, so it's, it's a big big committed that we we try to do now uh, since two years we have started to, to do that. Uh, the second is to promote the health architecture uh, in all our projects. Uh, so all our our project that we make the relation. No, no, we are not uh, in this uh, slide. Okay. So uh, also we uh, we we do the environment entry in all our project as that uh, that the client don't uh, make this uh, in this committed but I have uh, committed that we we try to apply all the environment on our project. So for this we have uh, based for the foundation uh, the work and I uh, I give them. Uh, to, to Simon to speak, speak about this. Okay, okay quickly. So uh, we, we have, have set up a foundation more than 10 years ago, as Matthew was saying, um, and it's focusing on research of the relationship between uh, architecture, health, and environment. Um, this, this, this theme was uh, set up a few years ago around the paradox that um, while the uh, world population is, uh, is uh, continuously raising, uh, proportion of rural population uh, was, is uh, becoming lower than the urban population, and at the same time, life expectancy in urban areas appears to be uh, higher than the rural areas. So the mission of our foundation uh, has been established to uh, research uh, how uh, what have been determined that. Uh, uh, life expectancy would be higher in, uh, in the city uh, rather than the uh, uh, countryside. Uh, the next slide. Next, please. Yeah, I try. Yeah. So, um, our, our foundation has published several uh, uh, books and uh, did some uh, uh, many workshops uh, um, in Paris, uh, but, uh, in, in many different cities. And the published books in in, uh, in in France and in China. Next, please. Next, Next slide. Yes. Thanks. And uh, last year we had a uh, um, uh, set up an exhibition in uh, in, uh, in Venice in the Vienna of Architecture. And this exhibition was uh, uh, called What Binds Us. Uh, Next, please. So uh, this was to present the research of foundation. Uh, it's an exploration between interaction uh, of health determinants and our living environment. Next. 
Um, so our, our instant health arises from the influence of uh, different factors which affect affects, uh, accumulate throughout uh, life. These are the determinants of health. Next. And um, according to recent uh, studies, uh, we realized that only 30% of the health status is determined by genetics and medical care. Uh, therefore, the living environment is a uh, uh, preponderance in the, in the, in the health. Uh, it's about 70% of health determinants are given by our environments. Uh, therefore, it's, it's a great lever um, in terms of prevention and health promotion. That's why uh, we set up this, this, this tool to promote um, uh, and to, to, to put the health in the center of our projects. Next. Uh, okay, maybe next, because we, we are lack of time. Um, so we, we apply uh, this, uh, this uh, logic in different uh, scales, different projects. Uh, this is a project in Hangzhou, uh, where we have a, a comprehensive program with hospital research tower, education, exhibition, library, senior living, expert and student housing. This is a city of users that allowed us to, to apply this, uh, this uh, health uh, uh, approach, global health approach. Next. Uh, this is our project in, uh, in Monaco. It's a Princess de Grasse of Monaco. Um, it's Next. Uh, so, it, <laughs> sorry. It's going to so back. fast now. You stay in Monaco. It's possible. You go back. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, in this project is uh, maybe next next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, in this project, we apply um, uh, this approach uh, for different uh, uh, sensorial items for the users, such as uh, uh, the earth. Um, so that's. Um, uh, the, the, the way the building is attached to the cliff gives the feeling of, of the, the environment with a, with a observing platform uh, on the landscape, as well as the sunshine with the bioclimatic uh, skin that allows uh, natural light in, uh, in all the, the areas, indoor areas of the hospital, uh, as well as the, the water with also uh, a continuous relationship to the sea from the from the building and uh, the air uh, because the, the 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 wind is very present in monaco and that's the the, the base uh, of the concept of the the project next uh this in the same uh, also we i i think I, we have no time i i be quickly this is the project in Morocco. We are in stage study. It's a big, big uh, hospital, two, 2, uh, 200,000 square meter. And we apply also all of this work we, we do with the foundation and our company, Bioclimatic Skin, uh, garden in the, uh, on, the, on the facade, and uh, also collect water, running water. Or, uh, so we can go next. If we want, we have some, this is all the work we do with IA environment and we have all uh, subject uh, linked with the environment and we apply in our project uh, uh, light, salary, uh, wind, uh, all of this uh, subject. Next. So we have some picture we see, for example, if, if uh, in each uh, st uh, level we have this balcony uh, for the patient that we will have a good view on the on the city, uh, and we think that the space also uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, we have a link with the, the healthy. Another uh, next uh, another example is in uh, China in uh, Shenzhen. As you see, uh, uh, another project, and we have also applied all of this uh, subject of our environment in the in the project, the garden in the in the terrace. Next, the, you can see in the project. So uh, we have made the garden in the the on the level low level, but also on the high level. And for each each level, we found in the unit ward this space opening in the uh, on the 
environment for the patient that we will have good uh, space for them. But uh, we, we think that they, they help him for the for this uh, health, the healthy. Next, uh, this project is uh, in our uh, uh, Reunion Island. And here we have, I think, is the one of the big uh, projects that we have do all items of uh, the uh, environment, uh, design biophilic, design active, and design sensorial as used in this project. Uh, as you see, the big garden, and also we have do and apply this uh, uh, natural ventilation. So in this project now, uh, seven months on the year, they don't use uh, mechanic ventilation. We do only the natural ventilation. So, and you see the, some picture. Uh, this is another project in the, in the two. Uh, also, we, as you see, we as try to apply all what we uh, the research of our foundation in the. Uh, in the garden for uh, road for the patient and also to have a sweet uh, space uh, protection of salary, uh, salary, uh, sun. Thank Next. you so much. Um, I think we, we should soon... Uh, uh, this is another example. Is uh, is uh, the project in Con? Here we have used two for the garden, also inside the project. As, uh, as you see, we try to have a good uh, space inside the project for the patient uh, to follow the project, the patient between the, uh, the lobby as the operating theater. And we try to reduce also the, the road to go as, uh, as fast as possible like that we that the patient be, be no stress to go to the to do uh, medical care next yes thank you so much for your presentation i think all subject yeah. as you see uh, and we and uh, simon another another uh, last project is not in the this is uh, this is another project in paris this is the uh, institut pasteur uh, as you see our how we work that we try to found all the area uh, that the patient can uh, make protection for sun uh, make wind and for this we finished to design all the garden around this uh, this uh, this project existing project next yeah yeah do you hear me, you hear me? Yes. Yes, um, I think we should... Uh, the last one is yeah, the Reunion Island. If you go... Just for, uh, for the la last project, is a, is the, a different type of project. is a hospital in La Reunion, which is being built, and it will be the largest uh, airport uh, with uh, natural ventilation uh, to be built so far. Uh, these are the, the natural ventilation studies. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it was a bit long. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry, we have to do it quickly as we possible. I, I hope it's, uh, you enjoy our presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so now uh, I would like to ask uh, Emmanuel Messi, who is the who is CEO, CEO of, uh, of uh, Ampia, Ampia, said, um, said, uh, what, do you, what do you think in terms of, um, of, uh, of um, Urban planning and how how uh, how healthcare uh, did impact uh, establishment. Um, how could you uh, uh, explain us? Well, uh, first of all, I would like to to give you my my vision of what I've seen during the last uh, 25 years. I have the the chance to to work for PR for now 22 years, and uh, I was before uh, working for another um, acute surgery group for nearly five years, so I had the chance to see the evolution of healthcare uh, in France, but from the last 10 years uh, all over the world uh, in the country where OPEA is based. So um, what, what my feeling is that we, we've seen uh, something interesting during the last 20 years. Um, first of all, we had all the hospital, the main hospital in the center of, of the cities, 
for, for many, many years uh, since uh, uh, middle age or, or, or more. But, uh, and um, we've seen that the last, uh, the, during the last 20 years, there was a, a movement to um, get outside of the main cities for, for big hospitals. And which is interesting is to see that in the cities like Nantes, for example, but also Paris, uh, uh, you see that uh, the, the main um, university hospital are leaving the center of the cities just to get into the suburbs or in the rings around the city, uh, just to be able to get more space, but also uh, more uh, um, accessibility to see um, where, where they can get more um, uh, also um, space for, for, for the activity. Not is a good example. For example, the, 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 the university hospital is in the center of the city. Very difficult uh, in terms of access. Elodie, on n'entend pas, hein, nous. You hear me? Shall I start again? I was in the middle age. If, if I go back, it will be very hard. Elodie, shall I continue or I will mute? No? Okay, so I continue. So yes, what, what, what the feeling we, we have is that really it was uh, interesting to see that acute uh, activities, uh, c private clinic, private hospital, or, or the, the big uh, hospital, were in the center of the city, and that now they are getting outside of the city, which is absolutely the contrary for PA. And uh, what we have now is that the nursing home, the rehabilitation centers, or, or, and uh, the mental health uh, clinic, used to be in the suburbs or more outside of the city for rehabilitation centers. They were more in the mountain or far away from the main cities for the beginning uh, of the, during the 50s and, 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 and later. But now they are getting back in the center of the city. So we see a uh, movement which is absolutely the contrary. We need to have those uh, activities in the center of the city and big hospital outside of the city. It's really reversed. And what you see here for Orpea, uh, you see that two, two nursing homes which are absolutely inside the city. One is between small houses and the other one is in a big condominium in, in, in Rio de, in, in Sao Paulo. And both, and the, the first one in the center, the of, center the city of the city is in, in Uruguay. The other, the other one is in Brazil. And you see that we are in the center, we are not outside, we are just integrated to the, to, the, to the main activities, which is very important. And what we see that now this, um, this movement of the healthcare has to be adapted to, um, to these to needs, needs from the population. From the population. <laughs> so when we talk about nursing home, when we talk about rehabilitation, when we talk about assistant living, uh, uh, we talk about daycares, they are back in the city. Uh, and, and those um, uh, services are now close to, uh, to the, the needs of the population. And I think that this movement has to con be continued and supported, supported by, by uh, uh, all the home care, assistant living, and, and also the, the, the technology like telemedicine. Healthcare is coming back uh, in the center of the city, but they are entering the houses of the patient. So this is really this is the main thing really the main, really the main, the main, main is that, is that, that is. you keep the big platform, very technical platform outside of the city with the big hospital, uh, with the big access, and what you what is coming back in the city is telemedicine and, and, and the, the smaller uh, services, the, the more closer to the patient, and even though going inside the houses. So that's the, so that's the, so that's the first, the first, the first thing I want to underline. On the next slide, you, you can see that uh, Orpea is, uh, has now a footprint all over Europe and, uh, uh, and also in, in uh, different countries, going from China to South America. We have a, a network of, uh, of 23 countries, uh, more than 1,200 uh, uh, facilities, nursing home, clinic, home care, assistant living. So we have this uh, large portfolio which is very adapted to every kind of cares, but also with, which is very interesting for us in our experience is that for the last 
30 years of experience of Orpea, we have this track record of um, adapting uh, the cares to uh, the, uh, of course, the, me the medical, uh, the adapted, the, the, sorry, the, the, the layout, the design of our facilities to the medical uh, project, but also to the culture to uh, the country, and which is absolutely very important because going from one country to another, we have also to adapt for the rules, for mandatory, 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 mandatory. Uh, but also for, for the patient. And, and, and really, uh, it's this uh, experience of Orpea is unique, uh, probably for, for French group, but also all over the world. And I think that it's something which is a, a very strong very strong, very strong. Of, uh, which has to be uh, uh, also uh, uh, pro, 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 um, give more, more, more information about uh, uh, and share this experience. When we talk about experience uh, for us and uh, for Orpea, which is, uh, which is um, uh, what is important is really that the, the, for the last 30 years, I said, uh, as I said, Orpea has adapted his model. Uh, uh, the Dr. Marion, the founder of Orpea, uh, he was a doctor, but he was a psychiatrist, and his vision when he created the group was to really adapt the, the design and the layout of the building with the medical project. Uh, 30 years ago, uh, for nursing home, uh, there was no adapted layout for Alzheimer patient, for example. And uh, the nursing home were very, very um, unhuman in terms of uh, uh, places to, to, to work, to live for the patient. What we have now in Orpea is really to be able to adapt this model, as I said, to, uh, to, the, to, to the culture, to the local uh, uh, habits, and, and to, um, to the country. We have also now the new generation of those uh, projects. Of course, they continue to be adapted to uh, the patient and the needs, but also we need to, be, to have green buildings now uh, because of the r rules, but it's uh, absolutely also the part of Orpea to be part uh, of this um, new generation of, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of buildings. So you see a lot of natural light, you see uh, the, 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 the use of uh, natural uh, 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 wood and, and, and all, the, the, all what we can use for this. Uh, the layout is also very important for uh, to uh, um, be uh, less energy, uh, to, to, to be also adapted for uh, the, the HR, uh, to, to have also some CSR policy very implanted. For example, in Ireland, we need to have some uh, housing uh, for, for, the, for, the, uh, for the, the, the staff. Uh, but we have also this new policy to integrate into mixed buildings. And the future will be also to, be, to, be, uh, to adapt our buildings, not only to our activity, but also for mixed, uh, uh, um, mixed buildings in which you can find services. In Switzerland, we have the restaurants in our assisted living which are open for the public. So people are, are coming uh, for lunch and mixed with their, our residents. We have kindergartens in, uh, in our nursing home in uh, Austria. Uh, we have physio center in Germany mixed with, the, um, with the, the nursing home. And we mixed also the generation in France between elderly care and a younger one. Um, we have also the culture. We can also integrate culture uh, in order to be, uh, to, to be adapted to the, local, uh, to the local habits. And uh, uh, of course, we work with our uh, architects. Each time, uh, there are architects from the country. So they have the local habits. So for example, here in the, in the GCC, we're working with Unanim architect. Uh, and uh, it's very important because they are from uh, Bahrain and they know the local habits. And, uh, and for us, it's, uh, it's a very important fact that we have, uh, we have this um, partnership. Um, so the, the, to, com to, to, to conclude, we know that the, the future of the medical uh, architecture is really based on the medical, uh, the medical project, of course, but to mix the medical project with a place where people live and work. That's the next, um, the next slide. And it's very important that living spaces, a uh, great place to work, as where, where the people can be able to, uh, to continue to, to, um, to enjoy, enjoy life. And, and we have to remember that architecture, places where people are going to continue to live uh, for the end of their life or for uh, some, some moments of their life, which is difficult for, for example, rehabilitation and mental health, 
they need to feel well in, in the, uh, the architecture and in this, um, in this new building. So it's very important for, for us that these, uh, these places are totally integrated in the system of uh, urban uh, organization, but also healthcare. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Emmanuel, for, this, uh, for all this insight. Um, to go on, I would like to introduce Simon Chassin uh, from Enovacom that will um, talk about also urbanization and uh, digital healthcare. Thank you, Joanna. Um, I don't have any slides, so don't worry, Joanna. <laughs> Um, uh, when, I, when I've been asked to, to talk to this uh, roundtable, I'm, I'm, I immediately think about the, all, we, all issues we are facing every day um, to provide continuity of information between the hospital and, and the city. Uh, this is really the topic I, will, I would like to address today, and, uh, and um, I, I, will, I will organize my, my talk into two parts. First, I will do a small assessment very quickly, and, and then I will explain you how we can achieve this target of uh, continuity of information between the, the hospital and the city. So first of all, let's do a, a small assessment. Like you all know, um, um, uh, um, uh, every uh, healthcare uh, providers are not talking together. Uh, we know that uh, from national uh, point of view, but also uh, in the city, uh, when you go to the, to, to the hospital, um, then you need to go back to your uh, doctor in the city, to your GP. And uh, uh, very often, uh, your doctor doesn't have your medical report from the hospital. Why? This is a good question. Because actually, th this report is sent, is sent by post, uh, so it, it takes uh, a bit of time, and usually the patient is going um, before to his doctor to, to have the, the follow-up on, on, on the care process. Uh, there, there is another case, very important also, and I, I think Emmanuel is uh, quite aware of that, when it's uh, about elderly people, uh, the, the, the medical file is quite big, and each time uh, the son uh, who is taking care of, of the elder, elderly people uh, needs to go to uh, a healthcare facility, he needs to bring the, with him all the, the medical report and explain again and again uh, uh, the medical context of uh, his uh, father uh, or mother. So uh, this is really an issue. Uh, th there is no continuity of information between the hospital and the rest of the city. Um, uh, so, so the target for that uh, is to implement and to, to develop what we call the integrated uh, care. Uh, the World of Health is giving a, a small definition of that. I will uh, just try to uh, mention that. Integrated care is a concept of bringing together inputs, delivery, management, and organizations. Uh, integration is a means to improve service in relation to access, quality, user satisfaction, and efficiency. Uh, this is a, a wide definition, but I think it's a, a good summary that uh, we need to involve all healthcare providers from the uh, hospitals, but also from, from the city. And, 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 and the target for that is to improve the quality of care and the, the patient, in, uh, the patient uh, management in general. So. Uh, how uh, at Orange and Innovacom uh, we can help to achieve this, uh, this target. There is uh, many uh, options to, to achieve that uh, uh, target. Um, first of all, the, the hospitals need to be connected to the city. And the, the, the first thing is to be able to... Uh, the first thing is to deliver some network connection, of course. Uh, the, the, the hospital needs to be connected to the network in order to exchange information uh, with the city, with the GP uh, in the city. So this is the first thing. And uh, if you want your healthcare uh, professionals and your patients, your citizens in general, uh, to interact with the hospital, uh, you need to provide them from uh, some mobile equipment first, uh, but also a network, uh, mobile network, uh, to allow them to interact with the with the with the, the, the hospitals. Um, <clears throat> um, another option, of course, is to uh, improve the IT infrastructure uh, of the hospital. And you know, you all know that uh, nowadays it's it's very uh, there is a lot of cost uh, by building by our own your IT data center. So this is why we can see that the the cloud uh, offering is. Uh, increasing a lot, and in Orange, we have a lot of uh, solution uh, to provide to the, to the market, thanks to the Orange Cloud for Business uh, offering. Uh, in the healthcare, medical information are very uh, important and, and very valuable. Uh, this is why cyber security is also a very uh, important stake, and, on, and at Orange Cyber Defense, there is a lot of skills and expertise around that to provide a, 
um, the, the most effective um, security around the medical information. Uh, one of the baseline of uh, Orange Group is uh, uh, network digital native. Uh, so uh, part of the uh, group offering, there is a, a lot of people working every day in, every days in, in the digital space. Uh, we at Enovacom are part of this uh, uh, organization. Uh, Smart City is one, uh, also one of the big uh, uh, strategic points from uh, Orange Group. So they are providing uh, uh, a mobile application called My City in My Pocket that allows the citizens to interact with the, uh, with the city for uh, administrative procedure, for example. The idea is to digitalize this aspect. But also um, uh, um, to provide some data and in, uh, intelligence, artificial intelligence, sorry, uh, to the, the people in charge at the city, for example, to make sure that uh, there, there will be no uh, flooding uh, so they are able to deliver some IoT uh, solution that will prevent from that. Um, on the Novacom side, so we are the, uh, the branch in charge of uh, ELs at Orange. We are a specialist in information sharing among the continuity of care. So uh, this topic of uh, continuity of information is really something important for us. And we have been working in that topic for many years. And we can still see that there is a lot of things to achieve uh, so, f first of all, um, data exchange and sharing is, is one of the key success of uh, achieving this uh, continuity of information. So, being able to send information to the GP in the city, being able to send a COVID test result to the national screen screening uh, system, uh, interacting with social insurance also uh, is very important to make sure that uh, the, 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 the care will be uh, paid, of course. So this is one thing. The other one is collaboration. How to include the GP in the city into the medical process. Uh, I'm saying GP, but there is also other healthcare providers like uh, OPEA that they need to be involved also in the care process. And, and for that, we can support um, uh, the, the implementation of this digital solution like patient portal, like healthcare provider portal that will allow uh, a most effective collaboration among all the care uh, process. For example, there is a, a very interesting case that is uh, uh, the, the, the cancer treatment. You need to involve different specialists from different locations, and they need, they need to come every week uh, at the hospital to make sure that every patient are treated uh, with the right specialist. This kind of uh, tumor board, this is what we call that, uh, that could be digitalized, and it's very it's easier for everyone to connect to a, a virtual room and uh, address every case uh, in the most effective way. Um, uh, so this is something we could support at Innovacom. Uh, uh, just a, a last uh, example, um, what we provided recently, we, we've, been, we've been part of the national information system for COVID screening. So it means that every day we connect, uh, we collect all COVID uh, results from all over the France. We centralize that, this information into, into one single database that is used then afterwards by uh, uh, anti-COVID application for contact tracing, but also for everyday statistics that you uh, hear every day. Uh, so in, uh, in a conclusion, I would say that um, what are the, the, the benefits uh, of this integrated care? Uh, this is uh, improving the quality of care, decreasing the costs, increasing the efficiency. And uh, we can see also a shift to what we call a value-based healthcare, where we put the patient in the middle of the process. And when you think about this, uh, this concept, uh, it, it's, it, it's making sense, really. Uh, um, for, uh, at the end, the, the patient is the most important thing. Um, so when you have achieved this continuity of information, uh, you, you can think about uh, taking care of digitalizing the, the patient journey. And I think uh, I will uh, end, end on to Sébastien. Yes, thank you very much, Simon. Um, so Sébastien, yeah, um, after the infrastructure, uh, to, you, you can go further also to, uh, to plan differently for patients. Exactly, thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Simon. Um, when we talk about urbanization, um, and we, if we think about the definition of urbanization, uh, one definition could be uh, organization and development of, in urban spaces. 
And in fact, when you, when you talk about organization in order to be efficient, you need to talk about processes. And in healthcare, um, about, uh, around uh, the city, hospitals and patients and, and GP and all uh, medic uh, practitioners in general, um, you have two kinds of processes. One between uh, medic operators uh, and, and professionals, like uh, Simon uh, presented uh, before, which is very important and where we need to be um, able to, to provide more offers and more solutions uh, to be more efficient uh, in any ways. And the other one is mainly concerning the patient and uh, the way that patient interacts uh, all along his pathway. Um, um, it's a quite complex uh, process uh, and when the patient take part in them, uh, you need to take into account the logic of cost, and, uh, uh, logic of efficiency and also a logic of autonomy. And I insist on this last point, autonomy, because uh, it's a very important one which regularly uh, comes up in all patient experience uh, questionnaires uh, around uh, all, all countries of the world uh, when you talk about, about what need to be uh, improved uh, for patients. And uh, this last part can be only done uh, through digital. And I think that we all need to, to, to improve uh, the way we bring more digital into all processes in order to be uh, able to, to improve the satisfaction of, of patient, but also the safety and at the end, uh, all the efficiency of, of these processes. Um, the, the, the development of notions of patient portal or what we call patient apps uh, is quite strong in Europe and in France in particular. Uh, a lot of French technological companies work since several years on these topics um, and are quite ahead uh, on, on this subject. And there is two main reasons for that. Uh, the, the first one is that the French system, uh, hospital system is quite complex. And in order to, to, to deal with this complexity, uh, a lot of people started to work on how digital could improve and facilitate and simplify uh, the, the global system. Um, the other uh, reason why uh, there is a strong um, focus on this subject in France is that the French government, in particular through the DNS, which is uh, the digital health division of the Ministry of Health, um, is uh, strongly pushing all companies to work on that topic because it's very important at a national uh, wide range and it, it has a very big impact. And I think that at the moment, French technical companies um, are quite ahead on this topic and are able to, to, to work everywhere to, to, to bring um, uh, all that uh, has been done in, into France in particular. Another important, important point when talking about urbanization and digitalization is to realize that the patient's journey uh, begins long before he enters uh, the, the hospital and doesn't stop when he leaves the hospitals. Uh, in fact, when you have to, to, to go to the hospital, um, you have first to, to take an appointment, you have to prepare your trip and uh, to, to choose uh, the way to, to, to go to, to, the, to the medical center. Uh, which can be by your own car, you can take public transportation, uh, you can uh, book uh, specific medical transport. Um, when you, you, you have uh, chosen your, your transport mode, you know so to uh, make pre-admission, uh, prepare some administrative uh, questionnaires, uh, prepare payment, prepare commitment and uh, consentment in general. So you have to, a lot of things to do on the administrative way. You have also to take in charge and to prepare all the hospitality offer you will uh, have uh, during your hospitalization. Uh, you need to choose if you want to have a private room or in some countries uh, there are specific uh, comfort offers that uh, need to be, uh, to be booked by the patient. Uh, for example, uh, entertainment, multimedia, but also uh, a suit uh, for uh, accompanying people, for example. And uh, that, uh, that there are a lot of things to, to, to do before the hospitalization. Uh, during, uh, during the pathway. You also need to prepare for um, a, a medical point of view. Uh, in general, you have to, to prepare some medical questionnaires to stop some treatments and to ensure that you are ready to, 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 to go to the hospital or to, be, uh, to, be, uh, to go to surgery, for example. Um, and after that, you also need to think about uh, returning home. 
uh, when you you will finish your hospitalization, uh, you will need to come back. Um, if, for example, if you if you go by car into the hospital, you might not be able to go back with your own car. You need to prepare that to ensure that we have the good uh, the good transportation system. Um, you will also need uh, some nurses at home uh, for for home care. Uh, you may need to loan medical equipment or to buy medication. Uh, to be taken after the discharge, so it's very important to help the patient to anticipate uh, these elements to improve efficiency and to, to avoid for the patient to do everything at the last time and enjoy quite badly. So um, it's very important because uh, in, in, in Europe and in, in the world in general, um, there, are, there are, has been a lot of improvements um, into medical techniques, uh, but when you go back uh, very early, in particular with the development of ambulatory surgery and ambulatory services in general, uh, you, you need a greater medical monitoring at home. And here again, all digital tools uh, have also a place to ensure the safety uh, at, at home at this moment. If I come back to a specific ex and quick example on how urbanization and digitalization are crosslinked, uh, I will come back to the subject of transport. Um, where we can highlight a, a strong issue between the constraints of urbanization and the location of the health centers. As Emmanuel presented um, a long time ago, acute care were mainly in two city centers and uh, progressively they go to the suburbs. Um, in any case, there you have a specific issue, in particular with the issue with the transport. Uh, when you are in downtown, it's very complicated to, to, to go there and to have a car access, to park your car, etc. Um, or, but outside the cities, you have an easier car access, but you have less public transport. Uh, it's um, sometimes a bit further away from your, from your own home. So, in any case, you have to, to take into account uh, the constraints of the place of the hospitals. And if we take an uh, a quick example on the ambulatory surgery, um, in general, the, the, the efficiency of the ambulatory surgery uh, depends on the fact that the patient are on time into the oper operating room. However, uh, daily operating uh, and surgery uh, program uh, are very regularly disrupted because patients are late. And uh, they are late, for example, because uh, they had a lot of traffic on the road and it's quite complex to, 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 to be on time at this moment. And this is where, uh, for example, digital can help to improve uh, this, uh, this process. For sure, we have all digital solutions on our own devices, like Waze or Google Maps, to anticipate and to see that, okay, I need to take uh, 30 minutes to go to the hospital. But uh, it's, it, this kind of uh, the digital solution can be included and integrated into specific uh, medical apps and patient apps in order to be able, for example, to give back this information to the hospital. Because the most important thing for, for, for nurses and, uh, and, and to the surgery in general is to have the information as soon as possible. Because if uh, the, the hospital staff knows you are late at the moment you present to the admission of the hospital, it's too late, in fact. You need to, to, to have the information uh, at start. And if, we are possible, if it's possible to give the information when the patient leaves home and he say, okay, he lives there, it will take more than 30 minutes to come, okay, he will not be able to, to, to achieve as a, to come at the good time, at the right time. So we can reschedule his operation a bit later and prepare the operating, operating, operating room, sorry, for, for another operation, for example. Uh, so this is, this is a very quick example, but which shows that with the constraint, constraints of urbanization and um, the, 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 the way that the processes uh, are, are done with the patient, a digital solution can help a lot to, to, to bring more efficiency and more safety for the patient at the end, so, and at the end, the, the satisfaction of the, patient, the patient also. So. Thank you so much, Sebastian. Um, talking about um, urbanization and patient, uh, Yannick Luca from uh, FNMF, um, you will um, introduce us um, uh, a specific subject, micro microsystem of health. Yes, thank you. I would like to speak about a project uh, managed by French Healthcare. And uh, the idea is uh, how we can provide uh, pr primary healthcare. Uh, in the center of a city. 
and mainly for population who don't have access, first to primary health care and second to health insurance. So it's mainly for poor country where you don't have a social security system. So the beginning, the start point was the idea or the definition of a health system. So we are waiting for the slide. So this was the beginning. The idea is uh, what is an healthcare system? The healthcare system, it's, uh, uh, we, we have seen that at the beginning with the, the idea that uh, healthcare was only a part of uh, uh, all the, the population is healthy. Uh, first, you have an economic and social context. And after that, you have uh, healthcare resources and activities we can provide healthcare. And when we are speaking about that, we have first activities and the staff we can uh, manage these activities. And you have also the idea of an health system performance. The health system performance is the first quality of uh, healthcare, second, access and cost. And uh, what we are working, and we're working on both sides. First, we are trying to provide uh, healthcare resources in the center of the city, and also to provide access, and mainly financial access to these activities. And this can give an, an health status. Uh, second slide, please. Uh, what we're talking about, if we are speaking about um, uh, healthcare system, uh, we are mainly speaking about three levels in the healthcare system. Primary healthcare, which are mainly provided by the community health center or a GP. Uh, secondary healthcare with uh, uh, mainly community hospital and tertiary healthcare, we are mainly a specialty institute. And the idea was only to work on the first level which means uh, we are only speaking about primary health care center because there is a problem of cost and mainly the hospital costs are more expensive and more difficult to provide in poor country uh, with uh, this kind of uh, uh, microsystem. The idea of the microsystem is two pillars. First, to create a primary healthcare center, and we're speaking about mutualist primary healthcare center, which means a community-based healthcare center. Uh, we can provide uh, GP consultation, some specialist consultation, and also some what we call light hospitalization, mainly for um, short-term treatment, like of uh, paludism, or also um, for birth. And the second idea, it's uh, when we have in some countries some primary healthcare centers, the problem is the population, they don't have the money to pay the, 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 the care. And so the idea is to mix the primary healthcare center with a mutual, a non-profit health insurance, uh, which this uh, mutual will help to first pay for the cost and also the idea to mutualize the cost so uh, to provide access for everyone. So uh, the, the principle of the mutual, and uh, we, have, we try to apply this principle both to the healthcare center and to the uh, insurance system. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, are based on the, some mutualist values, which are democracy, solidarity, non-profit, and common ownership of assets. And this kind of uh, principle uh, are very, are very efficient in countries where you don't have some uh, uh, efficient public uh, health system. And uh, that was the, the idea to create uh, beginning from a local route, beginning from the community, uh, a small uh, health system, we will provide primary health care to the population of a smaller area. It can be a village, it can be a district of, of a city. And the idea, when you're speaking about uh, urbanism, and it's to provide services, health care services, in the heart of the city. It's because it's all important when you are speaking about urban planning uh, to think that people, they will need uh, healthcare services uh, close to their home. 
And the last slide will be uh, uh, a short presentation of uh, how everything is working. Uh, the center of the mutualist health center, so the primary health care centers, you have a mutual, the mutual we can help to provide the payment uh, for the care. Of course, you have some members, some members who receive health care for the mutualist health centers, they have to pay membership fees to the mutual. And uh, the idea is to work with, uh, uh, to create this center, first with uh, French hospitals and French uh, services where we can help to give some expertise in the construction of the center. And the, although, the, the idea also is to work with local builders because uh, we think that uh, we, we must also use the local um, capabilities of the local builders and the idea to try to provide also uh, some funding to help to create of mutual health center. So the idea is to create at a local level uh, a small health center to provide a primary health care system to the communities. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yannick, for, um, for explaining us. Um, now to, to conclude the last uh, intervention, um, Michael Lozano from uh, Tezalis will uh, introduce us uh, um, to, um, to also um, medical, uh, biomedical waste uh, uh, and uh, specific uh, issues on environmental footprint. Michael? Michael, est-ce que tu es avec nous? should be uh, providing uh, uh, health care and providing treatment uh, to the patients and should uh, take care of uh, not making people sick. So uh, uh, they, they really need to, uh, to, uh, to focus on the uh, environmental footprint that they generate, uh, particularly in those uh, um, uh, in, um, uh, open spaces. So uh, this issue uh, is it, based on, on, on three main uh, topics. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the healthcare facilities in the urban spaces uh, will, will have issues related to, to traffic and parking, uh, traffic and parking uh, uh, of the patients that are going uh, to, to the healthcare facilities, uh, of the medical staff, which is going also uh, uh, to, to work and, and to take care of, uh, of the patients, uh, uh, including also the external uh, medical staff, like for example, the ambulances or uh, uh, the external nurses uh, uh, and, and people like that, uh, and also all the suppliers uh, which are going to be uh, uh, delivering the, um, the, the uh, all the different staff uh, for for the uh, for the healthcare facility to work. Um, on on the second uh, uh, issue is uh, everything which is related to the consumption of supplies, uh, which I have called the input. Uh, so uh, uh, this. This is uh, regarding uh, water consumption, uh, energy consumption, including electricity, medical gases, uh, fuel, everything which is uh, requ required uh, for, to supply the energy to, to, um, to the hospitals. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, everything which is related to drugs and medical supplies. And we know that medical supplies is also uh, a big issue uh, for the environment because uh, a lot of the medical supplies which are used in, in the healthcare facilities today are consumables uh, which need to be taken care of. And then uh, finally, uh, it, it, there is what I call the outputs, uh, uh, which things that uh, the, the, the hospital generates uh, and impact the environment, uh, which are related to uh, uh, waste, uh, uh, waste water and the chemicals uh, which are used in, in, in the healthcare facilities. Uh, uh, everything which is related to CO2 generation, uh, which would include uh, uh, the heating of the hospital, but also all the vehicles uh, which are used uh, in the hospital um, and, uh, and around the hospital. Uh, and finally, uh, medical waste treatment, which is uh, really a, a hot topic, especially uh, now that we have experienced uh, since two years uh, a very large increase in medical waste generation due to, to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, some of the countries, uh, they have multiplied by, by four uh, the quantity of medical waste that has been generated, uh, uh, and, and this has a, 
a significant impact on, on the environment. We will go move to the next slide, please. So basically, what, what can we do uh, in, in order to, uh, to mitigate what are the, the, the things that we can, that we can do uh, in, in order to mitigate all these uh, impacts that we have, uh, that we have uh, um, uh, identified? Can you move to the next slide, please? Yeah, I'm sorry, Michael. Uh, technique? Yeah. Okay, anyway, doesn't matter. So basically, on, on the first topic, which is related to traffic and parking, um, some of things have already been uh, touched upon uh, in the previous uh, discussions. Uh, one of the things is, for example, uh, optimizing uh, the number of times that the, um, uh, the, the, the patient has to go to the hospital. Uh, so with uh, digitalization of the, of the patient uh, path, uh, it is one of the things that uh, can avoid the patient to go to the hospital too often. Uh, telemedicine could be uh, also some, some of the options uh, to reduce the, the, the quantity of people going to the hospital. Of course, everything which, uh, which is around, uh, we call it in French, I like this word, that is uh, mobility, use like a, a sweet or a soft mobility. So uh, having access to a public transportation and having access to uh, bikes or uh, electric scooters or whatever. Um, and then uh, two, two important points as well, which is which are related, for example, to the short circuits. Uh, so the hospital uh, should be uh, considering the, 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 the use of uh, short circuits for the, for the suppliers, for example, uh, for the food or for, uh, for, the, for the, any kind of supplier. Uh, and also, um, uh, like for example, uh, it, the uh, internaliz internalization of some of the um, activities. Uh, we have seen in the last uh, 20 years uh, that a lot of uh, the um, uh, healthcare facilities uh, are subcontracting a lot, uh, a lot of uh, the functions. For example, uh, catering, uh, for example, laundry, for example, uh, um, sterilization of instruments, okay? Uh, and, and not to mention uh, hospital waste management. So all this uh, externalization uh, uh, makes a lot of uh, uh, traffic uh, uh, because uh, we need to bring all those supplies uh, to the hospital. So some of the hospitals have started the process of uh, re-internalization of some of the functions. Uh, for example, one of the uh, private clinics uh, in, 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 in the south of France, in Toulouse, uh, they have decided to re-internalize all the kitchen, all the catering. Uh, taking care uh, and, and then providing the food from, from the local uh, providers. Uh, in this way, they are, they are really uh, uh, minimizing uh, the footprint uh, of, of CO2 generated by the, the, the catering activities. Okay? Um, in, in, in regards to the uh, consumption of supplies, which is uh, the inputs, uh, I would say that uh, uh, one of the important things uh, is uh, having an eco-design of the hospitals. We have seen in the previous presentation by AIE a, uh, that it's very important that the hospitals and the healthcare facilities are designed from scratch and in order to be much more respectful of, of the environment. That was a very, very good example over there. Uh, uh, so uh, um, then uh, we, we also need to, uh, to look at the use of uh, renewable energies. Uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, hospitals, uh, hospital in the center of France, uh, they have decided to, uh, to put solar panels on the parking lots, uh, uh, so re using the energy uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the solar panels uh, in order to be uh, minimizing the, the, the energy impact that they have. Uh, and then uh, uh, finally, for example, using green vehicles uh, uh, should be one of the, of one of the possibilities. Uh, and then, uh, uh, if we go to the, to the third uh, uh, source of impact uh, on the environment, um, uh, we can talk about the, 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 the waste and water, uh, waste water and, and chemicals which are generated, uh, uh, which need to be uh, uh, really uh, uh, under control, uh, because uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, important source of pollution uh, in, in the healthcare facilities. So. Uh, what I would like to touch upon is uh, one specific example and the way that we can reduce the outputs of, uh, of the hospital, which is uh, waste management. Uh, basically, I think we, we have a video here, so maybe we can go ahead if, if you can display the video. It's just a two-minute video and then I will come back to that.
thank you very much, Mikel. Uh, I will, uh, yeah, um, I will invite you to conclude as our uh, section uh, um, is going to the to the hand. Mikel, sorry, if you have one last yeah. word. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. So, uh, yeah, as, as shown in, in this uh, short video, basically the, the, the idea that we are, our, our company is, 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 is making a system which is enabling to, to, to treat the medical waste on site as opposed to uh, transporting it and uh, incinerating it. Um, and this has a significant uh, impact in CO2 generation. But this is what I wanted to share with you, uh, just to, to conclude the presentation, say, okay, healthcare facilities really need to take care of the environmental footprint, uh, particularly in urban spaces. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mikel. Uh, I would like uh, to to, uh, to address a big, uh, a huge thank you to, to all uh, our interveners this morning. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>